Hello, this is your evil twin, welcoming you back to Let's Play Quantum Break. My name is Paul Serene. I founded Monarch Solutions 17 years ago with a very clear purpose. There are those who would question my actions. I'm recording this as a final statement of vindication, a testimony of how things came to be. I've always been devoted to my mission, never deterred from my goal, no matter the sacrifice, because I've seen where this leads. I've seen where it all ends. We have a problem. No word from Jack Joyce's transport. It should have arrived here by now. We may have a traitor on the inside. You're due for your treatment. I'll find who's behind this. Find Jack. That's our priority. Get your best man on it. There's more. As you know, Jack's level of interference led to unexpected complications. Witnesses from the university were transported here. You need to take a look. We can't afford any further obstacles at this stage of the plan. Now, I see two options. We could use force, remove any loose ends. But if those witnesses disappear, the public will start asking questions. Potentially turn on Monarch. Mr. Alternatively, Serene? I could mount a broad PR strategy, get the city on our side. But that leaves us with the... The loose ends. Precisely. The choice is yours, but keep in mind, the men will view your decision as a unified strategy moving forward. Before we deal with that life and death decision, let's trigger a quantum ripple. <laughs> I want this delivered to my office. What is it? A reminder. I suggest we deal with the issue at hand. Liam Burke over there can explain the situation in more detail. Of course. Ah, the core of the time machine. How long until the core is ready for transport? It'll be en route to Monarch headquarters in less than an hour. Installation should be complete before the gala. Good. Here we have the first of two narrative objects. Jack would never understand the necessity of what I'd done. It wasn't the death William deserved, but his knowledge posed too great a risk to our plan. The dossier says that William proposed the existence of the Cronon field at age 19, and he actually invented a prototype time machine. So you'd think that keeping Will alive would be a priority, that he'd be essential in dealing with the fracture in time. But it also says that he had a history of erratic behaviour, likely due to an undiagnosed schizophreniform disorder, and an unknown female source warned him about the fracture, and he might have knowledge of Monarch Cronon-related operations as well. And most importantly, it says that he will refuse to accept the inevitability of the end of time which may lead to unpredictable behaviour. And that's why Paul killed him. He didn't want an erratic genius undermining Monarch's plan. It's interesting to note that the text here isn't the same as what's actually written on the image of the dossier with the photo. The image seems to be an updated front page that now lists Will as deceased. It mentions that Monarch had security details following Will, who found out that he had a main workshop at the Riverport shipyard and a secret workshop somewhere else. Paul, the men are waiting for your input. In the novel, Quantum Break Zero State, Martin Hatch is a bit pissed off at Paul for killing Will. He thinks that keeping him alive would have been worth the risk. You hear about the library? Serene brought down the whole building just to take out that geek. Stone cold, man. Talk about making a point. Shh, he's listening. 
You only get to hear that if you hang around looking at stuff for a while. It was the first time I'd visited the Ground Zero operation in ages. The location I'd arrived in when I went 17 years back in time. The location where my fate was sealed six years ago. The area has coloured zones for different levels of chronon radiation exposure. Paul says that this is where he arrived when he went 17 years back in time. But he also says that his fate was sealed here six years ago. What happened then? We had Jack in custody, but I was starting to witness visions from the future which made it clear that could change very soon. The dossier on Jack says that after the death of his parents, he raised himself in his teenage years. And he ended up getting a criminal record for Grand Theft Auto, simple assault, and attempt to rob or steal. And then when he went abroad, one of the countries he went to was Laos in Southeast Asia, where he received training in light and heavy firearms. In 2015, he was arrested on weapons charges. So it seems that Jack, the supposed hero of the game, has been involved in some rather shady stuff. Also, Monarch knew that Jack would be chronon enabled and have time powers. In fact, the novel explains that's why Jack is of particular interest. Besides the fact that Jack and Paul used to be friends, Jack and Paul are the only people known to have developed these sorts of powers. The dossier says Jack has no knowledge of Monarch operations, so I guess that's why they don't consider him to be a danger to their plans. He has powers, but he doesn't know anything about what's going on. However, Monarch weren't counting on Jack using powers within a few minutes of the experiment. They thought that at first he would only have low-level Chronon abilities, and those powers weren't predicted to manifest until two hours after the fracture. So the Monarch security forces got a bit of a nasty surprise. Sir. Who is this? Amy Ferrero. She's one of the witnesses. Awaiting your orders on how to proceed. There's now a pulsing purple glow, and time distortion effects like shifting sheets of glass. Paul, we need your decision on how to proceed with the witnesses. And there is a new interaction symbol, two circles. This is a junction point in time. My powers grew stronger, even as the Cronon Syndrome worsened. I could choose a path that would become the actual future. But it wasn't optional. The moment wouldn't end until I made up my mind. Now we get to make a decision that will steer the stories of both the game and the live-action show. Paul's time vision will allow us to see premonitions of two possible futures. Paul isn't able to see everything that will happen, but he can see enough to let us make an educated guess as to what the results of each choice will be. Any potential threats to our plan need to be erased. Wait! Monarch would take a hardline approach. Crush all obstacles, eliminate all witnesses, it would be harsh. But I had made hard choices for the greater good before. I dug through the area, and I found everything I could on him, bro. This is messed up, man. I trusted Monarch. But the people of Riverport would turn against us. You Our secrets would be safe, but the public would hate us, and Jack would gain new allies. Monarch's got no authority to stop you, and you tell that to everybody on that bridge. So, that was the hardline option. What about if Paul chooses to use PR? Initialize a PR campaign. I want to stay. And that violence was because of Jack Joyce. Monarch would take a PR-friendly approach and manipulate the public into siding with us. Our lies would give us control. The manhunt continues as authorities search for Jack Joyce. Jack Joyce! We'd use the media to expose, then hunt for Jack. I uploaded all the files I stole on that USB stick from the Monarch security station. But the eyewitnesses would be out there, and Jack would learn our secrets. 
We now have a decision to make. What should Paul choose? If Paul goes hardline, then Monarch will kill all the witnesses, including Amy, the nice protester we met in the first part of the game. That allows Monarch to cover up everything that happened, but people disappearing raises questions and makes people suspicious. In fact, apparently Bobby Radford's radio show will incite people to start rioting in the streets. Monarch would have to rely on their wealth and power and connections to stop official investigations. So at first glance, that hardline option seems a bit dumb. It's what you would expect from a cartoonishly evil megacorporation, like Umbrella in Resident Evil, Weyland Yutani in Aliens, or Armacam in Fear. You'd think that the smarter option would be for Paul to choose the PR friendly approach. That means Monarch will bribe or blackmail the witnesses and make them say that the university incident was caused by the anti Monarch protest turning violent. They'll force Amy, the leader of the protest, to claim that it was actually Jack Joyce that blew up the library, that he was in charge and he's a terrorist with some crazed extremist agenda. What's more, Monarch will use their power and connections to get Bobby Radford taken off the air. That will actually change the radio shows for the rest of the game. Instead of Bobby Radford on the radio, we'll be listening to someone named Teresa Sedmak, who will spread Monarch propaganda. Jack will become public enemy number one, and Monarch will seem like saviours. But there is a problem with the PR approach. As Martin Hatch pointed out, there will be loose ends. If Monarch's bribery or blackmail stops working, then the truth could come out. In fact, Paul's premonition shows that Jack and Amy will end up working together. She'll give him stolen Monarch files, and Jack will know exactly what Monarch are up to. If Paul chooses the hardline option, then there's no danger of that. Amy and the other witnesses will be dead, and Monarch's secrets will be safe. The public will hate Monarch, but it will prevent Jack and the rest of the world from figuring out what's actually going on. So neither option is an obviously better choice. And of course, there's also the issue of whether we should even be trying to choose what seems best for Paul and Monarch solutions. Jack is the main character, we'll mostly be playing as him, so then the question is, what's better for Jack? People turning against Monarch, or learning Monarch's secrets at the cost of becoming a fugitive? Of course, at this particular moment, we're currently playing as Paul Serene, we're in his shoes and we're hearing his justifications for his actions, about how he spent 17 years coming up with a plan to deal with the fracture in time. So choosing the best option for Jack is a very gamey thing to do. It's a bit of metagaming for the best outcome. You could argue that instead we should embrace being Paul. We should have him choose whatever seems to be the most sensible option for him and for Monarch. And that's without bringing morality into it. Paul has already murdered Will. The hardline option means murdering even more people. So morally, the PR option is the nicer choice. Although it does mean manipulating the public and framing Jack. The final thing to bear in mind is that this choice will change who Jack will have as an ally. Paul's premonition showed that in the PR timeline, Jack will team up with Amy. So if you like Amy and you don't want to see her get killed, then that alone might be enough of a reason to choose the PR approach. On the other hand, Paul's premonition of the hardline timeline shows Jack teaming up with Nick, the taxi driver who dropped Jack off at the start of the game. He's a really funny character who has some great lines. He's actually a conspiracy theorist, but a really dumb conspiracy theorist. He does provide some help, but he has a lot of very confused ideas about what is going on. So if you think the game's a bit too grim and serious, then you might like to choose the Hardline timeline to add a bit of comic relief. So now's the time for you, the viewers, to vote for which option Paul Serene should choose. In the long run, it won't really matter too much which choice wins the vote, because for each part of the game I'll also do bonus footage showing how things can go differently. But this vote will decide which will be the canonical choice for the main playthrough. If you're watching this video within the first week of me releasing it, then you should now see a YouTube poll card that you can use to place your vote. The options to click on should appear on the video itself. It should work if you're watching YouTube on a computer, or on the YouTube app on most phones and tablets, as long as you're logged into a YouTube account. It's a bit experimental, but I'm hoping that for 90% of viewers this will be a really convenient way to vote. 
However, it might not work if you're watching YouTube on a smart TV or games console, or the built-in web browser on some phones and tablets, such as Safari on an iPhone or Amazon Silk on an Amazon Fire tablet. The same goes for if this video has been shared on Facebook and you're watching within Facebook's web browser on a phone. You'll need to choose the option to actually open the video in the YouTube app. So please do let me know if you can't see the poll or if you're having some other trouble voting. Of course, if you're watching this video weeks or months or years later, well, then the vote will have already finished. Once you've voted in the poll, it's also fun if you leave a comment or forum post about which option you voted for and why. Are you role-playing as Paul Serene and going with what seems like the smarter choice for Monarch Solutions? Or are you choosing what you think is best for Jack? Or is your vote based on which character you'd like to see Jack ally with, Amy or Nick? Or maybe your choice is based on which radio show you'd like to listen to. Do you want to listen to more of Bobby Radford? Or do you want to get him off the air and listen to Teresa Sedmak's Monarch Propaganda? The radio show hosts play different music as well. Or maybe it's because you've already played the game and you'd like to see the Let's Play go differently to what you chose in your own playthrough. Or perhaps some completely different reason. It'll be really interesting to see why people make their choices. And if you leave a comment or a post, you might be able to sway someone else who's on the fence and struggling with the decision. Next time, we'll see the outcome of that choice, and we'll be watching the first episode of the Quantum Break live-action show. Your decision will change what happens in the show, and then in the rest of the game as well. Thanks for watching, thanks for voting, and be sure to join me next time.